In this lecture, we're going to cover a useful and compact data structure called a bit vector. The operations on a bit vector are somewhat similar to those on a hash table, so it might be useful to go through the introduction to hash tables lecture first. To get started, let's say we want to represent a set of integers between 0 and n inclusive. Since we are treating the numbers as a set, we can assume that there are no duplicates. A natural query might be whether a particular integer i is in the set. Let's think about an efficient way of storing these numbers and how to efficiently answer the query, is i an integer in the set? If you've gone through the hash table lecture, then this might seem familiar. Using a hash table, we'll need a hashing strategy and a key representation. How do we do this? Well, remember that our integers are in the range 0 to n. Observe that each integer in that range could be a valid index into an array. We don't really need a hash function because the integers themselves describe where they go in a hash table. What exactly do we store at an index associated with an integer i? An obvious thing to store is a true Boolean value. Now, we assign to the index i the value true if the integer i is in the set. However, there's an inefficiency. In C, booleans are represented as integers. This means that we'll probably need at least 8 bits to represent one boolean value. We can do better. We don't really need that entire byte to represent true or false. We can do it with only one bit. With this scheme, we set the i bit to 1 to denote i as a member of the set, and to 0 to exclude it. Now we can represent the state of 8 integers with just one byte. Much better. How exactly do we map an integer i to a bit in our array? It's not too bad, just a bit of arithmetic. First, we have to decide the type of our array. A good choice is the native word size of the machine that we're on. We'll assume a 32-bit word size and an integer array of 32-bit integers. We'll say that each array index is a bucket. Given an integer i, we need to decide which bucket it will go into. For example, array at 0 is one bucket and array at 1 is another. Each bucket is a 32-bit integer, therefore each bucket can represent the state of 32 integers. Bucket 0 maintains the state of integers 0 through 31, and bucket 2 maintains 32 through 63. Figuring out the appropriate bucket is just a matter of dividing by our word size, 32, and because 32 is a power of 2, we can divide efficiently using the right shift operator. Now that we know the bucket, we need to know which bit in the bucket to set. We need to set the bit according to the remainder of i divided by 32. For example, if we want to set the integer 33, then the bucket is 33 divided by 32, and the bit is 33 modulo 32. An efficient way of finding 33 modulo 32 is simply taking the five least significant bits of 33 with a bit mask. Take a look at a list of integers in binary form. The least significant five bits of i modulo 32 and i bitwise and 1f are the same. Thus, setting a bit based on an integer i can be done with the following code. On the left side, we divide i by 32, and on the right, we left shift a bit into the appropriate position. Then we assign the result using a bitwise or into the bucket i divided by 32. Testing a bit associated with an integer is done similarly, except we use a bitwise AND. Although, this code won't win any beauty contest. It's an easy way of setting bits. In the next lecture, we'll go over actually implementing a bit vector. Until next time.